Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today we're going to go back to early 2012 and look at a wonderful interview that Mark Bussler of Classic Game Room did with yours truly uh, back then. I think it was around March or so of 2012. He had a wonderful series of uh, gaming interviews and gaming related interviews with people in the gaming industry and uh, I was, for whatever reason, was fortunate enough to be one of those people. He wanted to interview me as a major contributor to Classic Game Room. I was delighted and said, of course. So we had a wonderful ex exchange on Skype. And he did it in three segments, which I have a playlist on my channel. And you can see all three of those segments as they were originally aired via Classic Game Room. But I thought it, it kind of stitched them all together in one. And then at the very end, there's also an, another video that I added at the end of the segment. And it's the unboxing video that Mark did of the 68 El Camino painting that was an original piece of art that I made and, and gave to Classic Game Room, which you can see in all of the background shots of Classic Game Room today. So I thought I'd uh, put, put all these together so you could enjoy them in one setting. Uh, recently, we just, um, uh, Retro Unlimited asked me, Dean, do you think we could get Mark Bussler on the show? And I said, well, you know, all we can do is try. And um, I had, you know, Mark's private email, which I kind of hated to give out, but it was a great group of guys who said, we want to have a special show. They had uh, Gamester 81 and Rerez on there, and they said, we want Lord Carnage himself. Do you think he would come on? I said, look, you know, you can ask him. So I gave him the email. Uh, he was gracious enough to, to come on, I think for about a half an hour or so. And we had a wonderful exchange with Lord Carnage himself. Uh, via, it was Google Hangouts at the time that we did last Friday night. I think it was the 40th episode of Retro Unlimited. What a wonderful segment it is. I'll have a link below where you can see the actual exchange of all of us at Retro Unlimited with this wonderful group of guys, including Mark Bustler himself. So anyway, here is that footage. I hope you enjoy it. And again, at the end, I'll have the unboxing of the El Camino video. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy your games. Welcome back to another classic game room interview today with Dean Thompson of Dean's Cool Cars dot com and Cool and Cars are spelled with K's and let's take a look here at the beautiful El Camino painting that Dean has painted graciously for the show. We'll pull that up with the magic of editing, Dean. Well, of course, it's on screen now. Bright, it's red. That's a 1968 El Camino. SS 396, right? Yes, it is. And did you ever have one of those? Because in our discussions, it seems like you've had just about every car on Earth that's cool, except maybe the no, A-Team van. No, I didn't. I had a 69 El Camino and, and kind of a yellow primer for a short while, and that was it. It needed too much work, so I decided just to let it part ways, and that was the end of that. <laughs> But, we, but we, I did have an 87 El Camino. An 87? I thought 86 was the last year they made them. Was it 87? 87 was the last year. Very similar to a 79, 80, but they had four headlights. And I had a ZZ4 crate motor I dropped in, about 400 horsepower. You could do 250-foot burnouts with it. And uh, beautiful. I sold it as one of the cleanest El Caminos in the country when I advertised it. And I've had three El Caminos. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, three Rancheros. I had a 1960 a 1979, which is also the last year of the Ranchero. And then I had a uh, 1970 GT with a 351 Cleveland. I, I'm, I'm in awe of your car collection, or at least your past car collection, because it seems like you move, you move through them. But let me uh, give you guys a little backstory on Dean. You started watching the show, and uh, while people are familiar, I think very familiar these days, with our friends Mohammed in Qatar, who has donated piles of video games and some awesome game consoles. Dean has donated piles of cars. Pot tons of, <laughs> like, like here we've got a uh, 1977 Pontiac Trans Am Firebird that Dean sent to the show. This is just one of many. We've also got, got another one back here, the James Bond Aston Martin. Uh, yes, this very nice. <laughs> the original iconic James Bond Aston Martin which did arrive in great shape, except one of the, um, the uh, rearview mirrors was knocked off. So I like to just say it was shot off by gunmen. Well, of course. As, it was, as James Bond was running away from, uh, from bad guys doing something. But this is a really nice car. The, the, uh, the license plate. I'll show this to you in the full review. Whoops. I just knocked off the, uh, the roof. You can actually eject people from this car, mm -hmm. machine gun them, and uh, the license plate rotates. Uh, like like it, well, it was in Goldfinger, right? Yes, it is. That's that's the one from Goldfinger. 
Uh, but Dean has donated tons of cars, and you like the Muscle Machines cars, and m most of these are on the CGR Garage channel. So between you and our friend Steve from Ontario, Canada, I'm basically uh, in over my ears and cars for the next uh, several years when it comes to... I'm doing a trade with Steve for Cobra muscle, muscle Machines in exchange for a couple Hot Wheels, so we're still working on that. Well, Dean and, and Steve, I actually have some more cars to send out to both of you guys. I think it'd be funny if I just swapped the cars you guys send to the show with each other. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> but I, I always end up with a bunch in my collection as well that I think you guys will enjoy. Like, what do you have there? The, uh, 1980, the 1980s uh, Camaro, right? The Hot oh, Wheels? Yeah. yeah, I love this. This is one of my favorites. This arrived just in time for Christmas. I thought my Christmas was complete with my new PS3. This made it even more so. So thank you very much for this. Oh, you're and welcome. The very tubular uh, cars that you <laughs> sent. I appreciate it. Well, that's that's very small compared to the giant painting that you sent to the show. Let's take another look at this painting because this is what you actually do. You are a professional artist and are you a professional car collector or is that more of a hobby? Uh, it's more of a hobby and again, I'm a little bit older than you, so I started off in 1962, so I was able to collect a lot of these classic cars and muscle cars when they were affordable. My first 1970 Chevelle was my first car for a whopping $350. <laughs> Today's money, that would probably be $3,500. <laughs> so you could afford to have these cars back uh, years ago. I had a 1969 uh, Dodge Charger with a 3D3 Magnum. Wow. That I paid $850 for. You could wrap it around a foam pole and go out and buy another one the next day for $1,000. So those days are kind of gone. It's becoming more expensive to collect the cars. So... I'm in the process of determining which car I'm going to get next to restore, but I've got a couple of candidates, probably an old 70s Corvette. I've had three of those, and I really enjoy the, the Stingrays like you do. Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that probably will be my next car, or a 70 Camaro. My wife likes the Camaro. I kind of like the older Corvettes, so the Disco Vets, of course. Well, clearly you need to buy one of each, and then you guys can go drag racing. Sure. That's, that's, <laughs> always, that's always a good couple activity. Take it out in the street. Yes. Get, out, get out the uh, you know, married aggression. Uh, by racing cars. Now, now tell me about your, your paintings. I see a couple there hanging in the background. These are done in a very unique way because the El Camino, it's not mm -hmm. just like a flat, straight on painting or a side. It looks like it's actually driving out of the wall to run over you. It's a concept that I'll tell you where it came from. I, I did a mural uh, years ago. It's on my website in the bottom of my gallery page of a 55 Chevy truck, a friend of mine in El Segundo, California. He builds custom pro street trucks of the mid 50s, mostly Chevys and 56 Ford pickups. And he lowers them and puts big, you know, uh, wheel tubs in the back so you can put big Mickey Thompson tires. <laughs> and he built a really nice one. It took him like five years to build. He goes, you got to do a mural of this. And it looked like Darth Vader. It was lowered. It was all in black. So he said, could you paint my truck on my garage wall? And could you also do a Darth Vader helmet? Because he goes to car shows with the Darth Vader helmet on. I go, that's a great idea. So at the time, they were re-releasing uh, Star Wars back in the 90s, in the late 90s, mid-90s, uh, and I, I had a big gulp cup that had a beautiful uh, Darth Vader helmet. So I projected that, blew it up, and painted it in the truck. And he loved it. I've got it in my gallery and my website. But uh, he said, um, he said, you realize when I move from my condo, I'm going to have to take a Sawzall and cut this thing out and take it with me. And I said, well, what a great idea. I mean, people love murals. They love larger pop art pieces that stand out, that have a lot of impact as they are larger. But you, it's not always practical to, to paint a mural, then you move. And in California, everyone moves all the time. So it's, um, I thought it was a good idea to take a piece of MDO plywood. It's a half-inch plywood with a paper laminate pressed into it. And then I project the cars up onto it in a three-dimensional uh, image, draw them, cut them out with a jigsaw, finish the edges and back nice, and then I render a three-dimensional drawing that's actually a two-dimensional piece of art. They float about an inch off the wall surface. Uh, when you put track lighting uh, mm -hmm. in front of them, it comes down, creates a nice kind of a natural shadow behind it, so it looks like it's coming right out of the wall. Well, it's, so, it's, it's just very, it's really vibrant. First of all, you're a very you're a very talented painter. I, I will give you credit for that. You are very, you're very detail-oriented. 
because I I'm I'm a I draw I'm like a comic book my background's really more <laughs> comic book art things I like about you <laughs> and you can just you know you can do whatever and you don't always have to be so precise with comic book art sometimes you do sometimes you don't depends on what what you're doing but when you if you're doing like a car like the ones that I'm looking at behind you or like the El Camino I mean they, you just have every every detail is precise the edges are all nicely done and and now what what do you what do you use to paint that? Because it's not machined. This is actually hand done. No, it's it's all hand done. I'm I'm an old sign painter. I worked in the movie studios as a standby painter, and did a lot of television commercial backdrops and uh, mural work, billboards. In fact, I lived in Florida when Universal Studios first opened up there, and I did billboards between Tampa and Orlando. And back then, if you had hand skills, they'd put you up on a billboard and you'd paint billboards or. I'd let our old uh, vans for plumbing vans and commercial real estate signs. So I had a lot of hand sk uh, skills right out of high school. I immediately uh, segued right into the sign industry and then later into the motion picture industry. And uh, so I developed a lot of those skills and everything was done by hand with brushes. Now I love the computer. You can do great things with the computer. It's wonderful for games and CGI effects. But I still think that there is a market for hand painted graphics mm -hmm. and I love automobiles I love to paint things so it all actually each painting is done with acrylic paints by hand and then there's a little bit of airbrushing so like the Corvette behind me that's in its base stages now and then I'll finally go over that with layers of airbrushing to get the shading on the windshield and the interior mm -hmm. and the reflections on the hood and everything and I just kind of puts it over the top and gives it a sense of realism well, the hand, but the hand like. drawn and the hand painted and the airbrushed, airbrushing in particular, these are skills just being lost, uh, lost yeah. these days. Yes, sir. And it's funny because I, you know, I've done a lot of historical film work in the past, and uh, in the late, I think, eighteen hundreds, uh, machined items were really the uh, the sought after pieces. Uh, for instance, if you go into Henry Clay Frick's house, who was a big industrialist here in Pittsburgh, he has they have a lot of machine made tapestries, and those were what people wanted back then because they were made by machines but now that it's sort of flipping you want things that are done by hand exactly. and by real by real artists instead of instead of machines and computers mm -hmm. in fact that's a huge complaint among the amongst the pinball industry these days is that all the new machines are essentially photoshopped uh, usually with graphics from the movies and stuff and they don't while they're colorful and they look nice sty stylish they they lack the kind of detail that say the black hole machine behind me has i mean if you look, yes. if you look on that especially the sides you can see where somebody airbrushed that thing with a stencil and it's not no, as perfect and it looks happens. cool in yeah. fact your 2001 uh, pinball uh, review is one of my favorites some of those old cabinets had beautiful artwork uh, very stylized uh, very indicative of the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. and i grew up in the pinball uh, arcades as you did and uh, slowly get into the pac-man and the centipede and a lot of my favorites now you'll actually, well, yeah. I mean, I, the 2001 machine is actually one that caught. That's how. That's the reason I reviewed that. I was walking around the uh, the arcade at Papa. In fact, I'm wearing yes. I'm wearing their shirt today. Uh, I was walking around their arcade and I saw that and I was like, "This is great. I'm, I got I got to play this." And it just happened. I actually really liked the machine as well. It was one of the older machines. Sometimes they can get a little repetitive, but I thought that one was quite. Let me, let me ask you this: You'll on, on your site again. I'll, I'll I'll plug your site because I, I love your work. Uh, Dean'sCoolCars.com. You'll paint to order, right? and you have a, a wide variety of cars on there. And you actually started the 68 El Camino before we, uh, the classic game room empire, ended up buying our 72 El Camino. I, I know. <laughs> I, 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 felt, I was delighted that you got you. When I saw your unboxing video of the El Camino, I saw, thank God, he's got a great one. The 72 is really the quintessential 70s style El Camino. I also like the 74 and 5 ones, but the 72 is really the last of the powerful uh, decent horsepower. They still had the classic look of the mm -hmm. 60s and 70s El Caminos, but they reworked the front end on them. I tend um, to actually prefer the 71s. And, uh, I think the, the 70s, or is it 70? The Because they're basically Chevelles that are half truck yeah. is what they are. The El Camino, if you don't know, is essentially a Chevelle with a truck bed on it. And That's why they're so cool. <laughs> it is why they're cool. They need to make these again. It's the, the El Camino, the Ranchero, the Subaru Brat, and what was the other one? GM, yes. GMC made one, right? Didn't they? Uh, they had one, a GMC version call. I think it was a Sprint, um, which they had for a while. It kind of mirrored the El Camino from 79 to 83 or so. I think it was in there. There was a GMC version of the El Camino, yes. And they also had it in the uh, early 70s, too. 
they're very hard to find, but they're nice. GMC usually had a little bit better build quality. They were almost a notch up from Chevrolet, but they're just harder to find. But they're, they're all cool. My dad is more of the uh, Chevelle expert. He has uh, two Chevelles. And uh, like the like the El Camino idea, because now now we have some something to haul to haul equipment around in, if if yes. we, if we need to move something from one building to another. As you can see, we're in our temporary uh, studio here in space, which is obviously a spaceship, or at least I like to lie to people. I mean, tell people the truth that it's an eighteen wheeler like Night Rider. Well, of course. And that we come flying in here in the Trans Am, or the El Camino is in this case. You could back out the El Camino onto the portable ramp in the back and yeah. then launch, do a Rockford file turn, and then get out of there, yeah. There's some dude that gives us instructions and just some resident hot chick wandering around in a lab coat. Mm -hmm. if, that's, <laughs> if that's what you'd like to believe, then it's true. But we went with the, uh, the 72. That just happened to be the, uh, the best buy of all the El Caminos we were looking for for our our company vehicle that we're going to be taking out to some car shows and stuff this this uh, coming summer so you'll be able to watch those on CGR Garage. Wonderful. I can't wait to oh, see it's, them. It's in it's in fabulous shape too. It uh, the 72 didn't seem to be as overpriced as some of the 60s models. They're really expensive now. Yeah, you can spend $20,000 very easily now for a late 60s El Camino that's in pristine shape. So you did very well, especially for back east for the rust factor. It looks gorgeous. Well, that one really can, yeah. Yeah, it came from the south, and it's also got some wood grain finish on the back, which is nice. That makes it. That's the. That's just the the added touch that really dials the thing in. <laughs> it's kind of like an Atari twenty six hundred, which I hold up in every single interview. But, that's right. But you will you will paint cars to order. So if somebody says, "Dean, I want a seventy seven Trans Am," you mm -hmm. can you can actually take that order and yes, um, I sure can. and deliver a, a Trans Am to them in a, in a few weeks or a few months, however long it takes you to make them. Uh, I'd say about two weeks to, to paint one from start to finish. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll get you busy here with this. Uh, well, with, thank with, you. Let, let people know about uh, the work that you do. Now, uh, you're obviously a fan of CGR Garage, but uh, what was the first classic game room review that you watched? Because that's where uh, you first heard about it. Well, it was Wolvenstein, <laughs> which is a game I absolutely loved. In um, the early 2000s, they had Return to Castle. I had for the PS2. I would stay up for eight, nine hours at night playing it. Couldn't wait to get to the next level. I replayed it on hard, beat it. And so uh, when I heard that the new Wolvenstein game was coming out, I said, it's time to get rid of the Xbox One and get an Xbox 360. So I finally got it. The, in fact, it was the same day that Wolvenstein got out. I bought my, and they just dropped the price that day by 50 bucks on them or whatever. And I love the game. So I went online immediately. I said, well, I'm going to see who else loves the game too. And I got kind of mixed reviews, but pretty much decent reviews. But your review really stood out. It was very positive. You picked out all the attributes of the game that I love. Uh, and that's why I like your reviews. They're very positive. You, you have no problem uh, if a game doesn't, isn't a great game, you'll, you'll pick those points out too. But I like your positivity about the games. Singularity was another review that I liked. I went out and bought Singularity because based on the review that you had shortly after Wolvenstein. So um, your reviews are just awesome. And I said, this guy is, he thinks like I do. He's another <laughs> retro gamer. He's got the same mindset. So I quickly started going through, and I bet I spent probably two weeks going through virtually every video you had, uh, with beer, by the way, I might add. And I'd watch them after work. <laughs> Ah, yes. Well, they are best best enjoyed with a cold beverage of your choice, of they course. Sure are. Everybody knows that. Whether it's Newcastle or I, IPA, I like a Budweiser once in a while, something kind of basic. But um, but overall, yeah, no, I, I think your reviews are fantastic. Uh, I was excited to see you review other things. So you said, I want to start reviewing a CGR. We're going to have a CGR garage. I said, well, this is fantastic. So I had donated 10 games to Classic Game Room, which um, they ended up going to Undertow. They mm -hmm. got some great reviews. They were actually my favorite games, which I had saved. I wouldn't get rid of them until I, until I had the, went ahead and donated them. But uh, I had the original Twisted Metal, Road Rash for the PS1. Um, I had many other games. I had Manhunt, which is one of my favorites, and a few other games. Derek did a great job mm -hmm. reviewing them. And uh, anyway... Um, but I had no more games to donate, so I said, well, I've got a thousand cars around here. I mean, I've got just tons of these die-cast cars I've been collecting for years. I, I love them. I had some Hot Wheels. Uh, I even had Hot Wheels from 1968, which I don't have anymore as a mm -hmm. kid. They'd be worth a fortune today. That's the first year but, they released them, right? 
Yes, I had my favorite was, and in fact, I found it on eBay. It's a hundred dollars right now, all scratched up, and it's a 1968 um, El Dorado Cadillac, purple. The hood opened up, and it had the red line tires on it. And I, I'll have to get one. I don't care what it costs, but I'll have to <laughs> get one. But um, but I, I did have some cars. I had these muscle machines, which to me are kind of indicative. They're, as an artist, uh, I like the style of them. They're kind of over exaggerated. Yes. That's a muscle hey, machine. If you've seen CGR Garage, you uh, we've reviewed a lot of these, and every one of them has come from you. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And they, they aren't as popular as the Hot Wheels, and Steve has got some fantastic donations. I love some of the cars that he's donated. <laughs> yeah. um, and we chat once in a while on, on Twitter about the different Hot Wheels and collectibles and what have you. But um, I think that uh, the cars are good. And, and when I saw you go to the, the Fort Pitt Garage, you did mm -hmm. some fantastic reviews of each of the cars and they're being restored and some of the ones just kind of you know incidental videos showing cars and showing them in construction uh it, i got excited i said this is something i want to support so i wanted to donate the cars that i had and um and i certainly have a lot more but i don't want to backlog you <laughs> with, with <laughs> the reviews i know you got quite a few to, to get to but i'll have plenty more i got another reservoir of cars here for the next batch if you want me to send them like i told uh, like i told mohammed i think we're i'm backlogged on uh, game review donations for for years possibly a decade because so, uh, because so many people like yourself and all the other all the other supporters of the show just flooded us Yes, flooded us with some awesome games. I mean, it, and there, we have uh, we have a room filled with games. Some of them are back there. That's actually a small percentage of yes. uh, of the collection. Although my entire Intellivision collection is back there, I'm proud to say I still don't have a oh, working Intellivision. I love your 2600 collection too. Yeah, I, I I do collect Atari. I collect Genesis. I'm not actually as much of a collector as people might think, because in my in my mind, at some point, it just turns into all the stuff that it's there that I feel pressure to use that I don't have time to use. It's like, oh, oh gosh, I have all these things to dust now. So I, I, I try to actually keep a keep a condensed collection to, to things I use. But of course, with the show, as we're sure. uh, as we are hopefully embarking on a larger studio set, mm -hmm. uh, then then a collection makes sense. So people who have donated things will see it in the background as we're going to see your El Camino, and yes. uh, we see Wind Squid and all kinds of cool stuff like Unicron back there that Mohammed sent, and all kinds of other great stuff from other from other viewers. But I'm, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed the uh, Wolfenstein review and uh, Singularity because, uh, for whatever reason, maybe just because they weren't, you know, the, the popular multiplayer games at the time, th those two games in particular just didn't seem to get as, um, as, as, as positive a response as I thought they should have. Because they, they were good single player experiences that were just kind of twisted and slightly out of the ordinary, but still, mm -hmm. but both very playable. And I, I don't recall exactly, but are they, they're both in the same developer, too, aren't they? I know Activision it's published Raven Software. In fact, yeah. I actually sent Raven a letter after playing Singularity, thanking them for two wonderful games. I said, I can't tell you guys how much I love single-player games. I play a little bit of multiplayer, the new Twisted Metal I'll play online, and Need for Speed the Run. Mm -hmm. That's the other one I enjoy playing online and do okay at it. Uh, but I, like you, I love the single-player experience late at night with a beer, with <laughs> at Vinnie Corleone next to me. <laughs> it's fun, and I love the sci-fi genre shooter where it kind of crosses over. That's why I like the Wolvenstein, and mm -hmm. of course I love the original Return to Castle Wolvenstein. Yeah. It was fantastic. I'd love to see your HD reboot of that, by the way. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, everyone likes a Call of Duty. Now, I had never played a Call of Duty until I saw your reviews of Call of Duty Classic, Call of Duty mm -hmm. 2, 3, and 4. And uh, that's when I went out and I instantly bought all of them. I went through and played Call of Duty Classic, loved it. Uh, Call of Duty 2 is fantastic. Yeah, Great that's work. actually my favorite one, I think, is Call of Duty 2. I, I think it is too. I have three here. I haven't played it yet, but I've got a, I've got a backlog also of games I'm trying to finish from before. And three is excellent uh, as well. Yes. And uh, I think when they went to Modern Warfare, just, you know, I mean, while, while they're technically impressive games, they're way, yes. way beyond me in terms of just where I'm, where I'm usually at. They're just, there's like so many things going on. Yes. And the problem, like, I like multiplayer, but it's best to play with friends because otherwise, you, that you, at least I feel like I then have to compete, but I don't, have yes. I don't really have time to compete, but I don't have to, so I don't have time to perfect my game. So I end up just getting killed right. instantly by some cruise missile coming out of nowhere. And then Me I just too. then I just get then I just get annoyed and it's like I don't want to play this. I'd rather play pinball or like play something where I can just play through it leisurely 
at, yes. at my own time. Like I'm currently enjoying um, both Binary Domain again. Oh, I saw your review. Oh, love, Binary Domain is awesome. I liked uh, Vanquish a lot too. So that game is, I think they're very similar. And I'm um, also still enjoying uh, Devil Survivor 2 a lot. I mean, these are just games I play on my own, my own time. Not have to worry about how well I do. You can just a go-to single-player experience. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and not that I have that much time with to play them, but you know when I do, uh, when I'm not working on them, then those are the, that's my kind of go-to game. But uh, let, let me ask what uh, what some of your next uh, painting projects are. We got a couple more a couple more minutes here. What else are you working on? Well, I'm I'm thinking next I'm going to do George Barris, the car designer that did the original Batmobile in 1966. I met in the 80s. He gave me some several uh, photographs from a movie called The Car from 1977. Kind of an evil possessed car, kind of like a Jaws but with an automobile. And I love the way it looks. It's dramatic. So I'm going to do one of The Car with the car uh, movie poster logo also incorporated into it. I'm going to do just a cutout of the 1966 Lincoln Futura Batmobile mm -hmm. as well. Black with all the red piping on the edges and the whole deal, and maybe Adam West in it. Uh, I think that would be a fantastic uh, painting as well. Um, I'm thinking about kind of segueing into some other things. I think that to do a, a TIE fighter cutout following an <laughs> X-Wing would be fan with a Death Star cut out in the background around a contour cut around the whole thing would be fantastic. So these are all things that I'm leaning towards doing. Uh, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to do possibly a little Duke Nukem cutout. Duke <laughs> Nukem, Laura Croft, Doom. I love the, the artwork of the original Doom poster. Uh, my wife had a birthday, and I cut out a Betty Boop uh, <laughs> little cutout for her. And uh, they're small, easy to do, and I could mass produce a, a bunch of these very easily. So I'm thinking about doing some gaming-related. You could just imagine a Shock Troopers uh, cutout with maybe the logo incorporated with one of the characters with a <laughs> with a wife beater on and the mullet with a machine gun, the whole, the whole deal. So uh, I've been a lot, my head's filled with ideas. In fact, your show has been very inspirational for me. It's, it's just filled with creativity. I, I, I love watching it, and it seems like every day I see something new, a new idea pops into my head that I want to incorporate into a piece of art. So, Well, I love art. It's, it's art something that I've... Uh... You know, visual art, at least, is something I've gotten away from as I've gotten more into the, uh, you know, the video editing and the radio. I, was, I mean, I always viewed Classic Game Room as kind of a combination of radio and video editing. Uh, yes. But I, I'd actually like to get back into it a little bit more and have a couple, uh, couple plans to do that. But, of course, it all falls upon time. But if you follow the Wind Squid channel at all, you'll see some, uh, some new stuff, actually. Uh, without everything falling off of the table. So I, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't bought any new books in ages, so I'm still using a couple old ones from, uh, from my college days. I've got so many of them. But I've got, uh, you probably can't see, it's, it's all pencil at the moment. I can see it. No, it looks great though. And in fact, I, I have, I've saved your uh, YouTube channel for WinSquid and I've watched every one of your videos. Yeah, I'm changing the format a bit. I wasn't thrilled with the, because uh, the problem with the animation, I wanted it to be animated, and after doing a little bit and just then doing some additional research and what it would take to really get animated, it's, uh, it's either too time consuming or way, way too expensive, unfortunately. So I'm yes. uh, leaning towards going back to uh, still comic book art and then mm -hmm. using the channel to support the uh, uh, hopefully a uh, real comic book. That's, I guess. I love your spoken word, actually. I think it works well with the, with the images of the comics that you've drawn. And it was all right. I, I wasn't thrilled with it myself. I, I looked at it like this. This was meant to be more. It falls a little short, so I might just go straight straight visuals. But uh, I, I guess a few, you know, yourself and a few people, I guess, like the spoken word approach. I wasn't wasn't as thrilled with it. But hopefully, uh, a comic book form will um, will be, will be more uh, doable and also make me happier in, with the end project. I guess. You've got my undying support in whichever capacity you decide to go with it. I think it's a great idea, and I love everything about your little nuances. Wind Squid, uh, Lord Carnage. <laughs> oh, he's in the comic book. He's, I have the story written. That's actually one thing I forgot <laughs> to mention. The whole story's done, it's, but it's big. So you know, yes. doing like one episode every like six months isn't obviously going to cover it. It's got to be done in a, uh, in a uh, more efficient efficient manner. And how, how long does it take you? Actually, while, while we're on the subject of time, it takes because it does yes. take a lot of time to do a good piece of artwork. Um, how long does it take to do one of these cars behind you? Well, they're, they're typically, most of the ones on my portfolio, uh, 
in my gallery, it took about 24 to 28 hours on average. Uh, the URL Camino took about 60 hours. I'm in putting more quality into them. I, initially, I had done four of them. They all sold on eBay within about a week and a half. And one fellow in Port Charlotte, Florida, was opening a muscle car garage. He had 100 mm. cars and some Harleys and stuff. And he goes, how long would it take you to do eight or nine of these things? And I said, well, I'll get right on it. It'll take me about eight weeks. And I, might, my, and I did one per week at about four to five days per painting. And I cranked out eight of them. I gave him a Shelby Cobra as a ninth one as a gift because he was, he was really nice at ordering so many of them. I've also, the 57 Chevy that's in my gallery, uh, a fellow in New Hampshire bought that that owns a Chevy dealership. He's got that in his office. Hmm. Uh, I've sold them all over Atlanta, Georgia. Um, there's another one in Chicago of a Mad Max painting that I sold. So they're, they're, they're pretty much gone. They go pretty fast. Uh, I try to do the cars that are popular that people like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm even thinking about doing an 18 van, which would be <laughs> awesome. Now I've got four pictures of 18 vans that, are, that people have restored that would make fantastic paintings. You could do the Knight Rider car, Smoking the Bandit. Uh, so there's pretty much it's endless uh, pop culture type things that would be awesome. I think, in, in the form of a cutout or with cars or what have you. So. What if somebody just happens to like that particular Chevy Nova or the old Corvette in their, in their collection or the Corvette that they had when they were a kid or the one they wanted when they were a kid? You can take the pictures and you can paint these cars and deliver them their dreams. Yes, I can. That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what the idea is anyway. Well, the, your work is very good, and thank you again for the El Camino. I am um, at the moment... Never with our temporary spot here. I don't know how much room we have to, to properly display, but I'm going, we're getting a few more arcade games, which are uh, at, at this moment on order, to sort of fill the set out and give it the, yes. uh, the full, the, you know, my, my full vision here in our 18-wheeler in our, um, you know, environment. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get the El Camino in, in on some, um, some side shots, but that, that will be a prominently placed in a, uh, in a new spot in the future. Oh, because that's it's, it's it's just it's beautiful. It's a great it's a great painting, and he also sent along a hanging kit. So thank you for the hanging kit. Oh, we're, you're very. Welcome. We were holding it up against the wall the other day, just like wow, this thing's like driving straight out of the wall at us. And <laughs> like, we'll put the hanging kit up. Wait, we can't hammer through metal right now. Never mind. We'll try it later. You so, could use metal screws and probably screw into some of the bracing on the wall and have the bracket and then hang hang the painting up onto that. So. Or you could take a piece of wood, lag bolt it to the wood, and then to that wood screw the bracket, and then put the mail feed oh, yeah. in. The hook. So that's true. There's you a do... couple of ways to approach it. I didn't think a about furring that. strip, lag bolted on there, would be ideal, and then you could put the bracket onto that. Well, many people don't realize is I'm about the least mechanical, least handy person on earth. I can't, I can't even fix a doorknob. I don't. I like call my father-in-law for help for the easiest things. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> help. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I can't hang up this picture with tape properly. You're, you sent along a Lagunitas IPA poster with the car. I, it actually fell off the wall because I couldn't even tape it properly. So I've got to, I've got to get better at actually, you know, being a pro I wouldn't survive in the wild for very long. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'd, Neither one of us, I think. I'd get cold and hungry and just end up calling my mom to come pick me up or something. Um, but this is, uh, again, we're talking with Dean Thompson of Thompson, of, I'm sorry, not Thompson, of Dean's Cool Cars dot com and uh, he's donated quite a few items to both classic game room cgr undertow and of course the cgr garage show as well as the mad max action figure and uh, yes. your, your cat's your cat's name is Vinny. yes Vinny corleone and uh with the custom made sh uh, hand shotgun i might add so these things don't go unnoticed <laughs> Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I actually was ready to send it, and then all of a sudden, where the hell is the shotgun? And the little SOB made off with it. So I went right down to the art supply place, got some modeling clay, immediately made another one, baked it in the oven, painted it, slipped it in his little hand, it works, perfect, and then sent it to you. <laughs> well, thank you. And some, you always send some great pictures when you go out to, you're out, you're out in California, in Southern California, yes. so you're near one of my favorite breweries, the Lagunitas Brewery. Uh, yes, 90 minutes. I, I am very <laughs> jealous of that. I would, that would be probably very bad if the Lagunese Brewery was actually close to me. In fact, I should probably be fortunate that it's not. I, yeah, my wife hasn't been there yet. She's anxious to go. They get a beautiful outside cantina where you can sit out and eat, you know, uh, appetizers and have a beer. They've got a great selection of uh, homemade beers there. So I enjoyed your pictures on Twitter recently. You went to Philly. Yep. 
and went yeah. to the Philadelphia Brewery, which I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed your pictures of that as well. Yeah, I try to visit breweries when I when I'm out and about. It's uh, obviously something I enjoy. So I've been to been to quite a few, and that was a that was a fun trip. Yeah. Oh, good. So, but uh, thank you very much for talking, and th again, thank you for all of for all of the donations. Thank you for the incredible painting. Yes. All, all of the muscle machines and your continued support. And I'm also glad to hear that you enjoy the game reviews as well as the car reviews. I sure do. And that's an awesome T-shirt that you're wearing. Well, thank you. It was a wonderful Christmas gift from my wonderful friends at Classic Game Room. <laughs> Thanks again very much. That really made my Christmas, by the way, Mark. I, I really do appreciate it. Well, glad it. you enjoyed that. We'll have to get another care package out to you soon. I've got a, I've, I'm basically, uh, I've got a whole fleet of cars back there that needs a good home. So the shelves can't and hold them all. Oh, yeah. You could always fit Bosk inside that T-top, I think, of that Trans Am. You'd make for a wonderful yeah. review. And yeah. we, got, uh, <laughs> we got Stormtrooper right here. Let's see. Well, this, this, oh, this is one of the newer ones. Their legs don't bend like the old ones. Oh, no, okay. We got, we got them bent there. And let's see. Here's the Trans Am Stormtrooper. Perfect. In the Trans Am. Put your legs around the steering wheel there. All right. <laughs> that's not a tilt steering wheel on this thing. No, I know that's one of the drawbacks of. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, he's a little large for the Corvette. For, for the I'm sorry, the Trans Am, it's not a Corvette. Please, the Empire doesn't drive Corvettes; they drive Trans Ams. Of course you do. Everybody knows that. Oh, I have that. I have that same. <laughs> that's, that's that's a great DVD box set. Thank you once again to Dean Thompson, DeansCoolCars.com, and cool and cars are spelled with a K. We should just flash the flash it up on screen right now like an infomercial. There it is. Now you know where to go to buy yourself some awesome artwork and the uh, and cars exploding out of the wall. So thank you, Dean. I will talk thank to you, you again soon. Okay, thanks, my friend. Here we've got a secret package from our friend Dean in California. Do not lay flat, fragile. Well, I guess we probably shouldn't have laid it flat and driven a car over it then. Well, hopefully it's all right. Got a knife here. Let's open this up and see what could be fragile. See if I can open this without cutting my fingers off or decapitating myself or anyone else nearby. It's a freaking problem right here. Was I allowed to cut the stickers or were they fragile? I think that was okay. Got a side here. Oh, there appears to be something in there. And it's not a corpse. At least not like one I've ever seen. Thank you for not sending a corpse, Dean. Much appreciated. Now, a case of beer would be fine, though. This thing is wrapped for space travel, that's for sure. They probably don't pack things in this, like satellites as well as this. Thing is like crazy wrapped here. See, when I wrap things, it's like two pieces of duct tape and an inside out cereal box. Because that way people get the joy of a package and realizing they've just gotten an inside out box of Cocoa Puffs. Yay, it's like Christmas, but better because you can eat it. Freaking chainsaw. This will be the uh, new game, Mark versus Packaging, where packaging usually wins. I'm trying to be delicate with this. There we go. This is like peeling back layers of an onion except without tears. Well, there might be tears. Tears of joy, I guess we'll find out. Oh, there's another box in here. Damn it. Alright, we've got another box here to cut open. Packing job there, Dean. About 20 minutes later here. We've got a Lagunitas IPA beer poster. 
which I think we can find a home for this on the wall. Just peel this apart here. It's something red. It's something that looks a lot like a giant. El Camino. Now we gotta find a place to hang this thing. This is really nice. After an exciting unboxing, here we have a gigantic painting of an El Camino with a Lord Carnage license plate by our friend Dean in California. Can you see how amazing this is? Hand painted. And it's, uh, it's quite something. A 1968 SS El Camino by our friend Dean Thompson at Dean's Cool Cars dot com and I actually uh, saw one of these on his website that he did of the Mad Max Interceptor which is really cool so that's Dean's Cool Cars spelled with a K cool cool and cars are spelled with K's so I'm sure you can find that online Giant El Camino now we've got to find a place for this which is gonna be a little bit tricky in our temporary studio space here as I'm getting a, a couple arcade machines in soon and then we're going to put the El Camino on this wall or that wall which you can't see right now because they're not very exciting and uh, will be featured in many shots and of course as we move on to a different studio someday even though I'm not supposed to lay this thing flat for a couple shots here I'll show it to you on our desk and uh, the detail is, is really remarkable. I was always good at drawing, but I could never paint worth a damn. So this is just really impressive, Dean. Very good job. And he also sent a wall hanging kit. So Dean, thank you very much once again. We're going to put this thing up over the next week or so, as well as uh, hooking up some new arcade games. So an El Camino with a giant centipede arcade machine is a pretty kick-ass combination, if you ask me. So a giant thank you to Dean. From California, once again, he sent a lot of little toy cars. Now he sent a giant El Camino painting, which is going to look amazing on the wall and on the show. I'll do a full review later when it's actually hanging and in a nice presentation place. But until then, thank you, and I love the Lord Carnage Pennsylvania license plate. Lord Carnage would be proud, but he doesn't need a driver's license. He just does what he wants.